advice would you give to an aspiring television writer? You have to really fight for your own voice. Don't, don't think that consensus is the way to go. It rarely, it rarely is. It's usually one person who's right, and, and when you get seven people that need to be right, you usually have nothing at that point. You have absolutely nothing. You need one person who's right, and a lot of people say you're wrong, and you'll be right. Um, and you know it. There's something in, in you that you can't violate. That's all. I, I, you can't violate. There's, and if you violate that, you'll pay the price, and you should. What do you think that is in you? Um, there was no, I, I didn't have meanness in the comedy. You know, the times that I tried to be darker or meaner or hipper, it didn't work, you know. Uh, it just wasn't where I came from. And, uh, and even sometimes the writers would say, boss, nobody says I love you. You can't say that anymore. And I go, well, we're going to say it, you know. Um, we're going to say it, and it'll work. And I, there were times I so firmly believed that I was right that I wouldn't actually say the right, go home. You guys can all go home. I'm not, everyone's not firing anybody. Everybody be here in the morning, but I don't want to discuss this anymore. This is what we're doing. This is the show. I understand that you don't think it's funny, but I do, and it's on my shoulders. The good news is if it doesn't work, nothing bad happens to any of you. You know, um, you know there was a thing that my brother used to do to me that, that we put in the show where my brother, who was my champion forever, five years older, never diminished me, always brought me along, you know, just my, my biggest fan since the day I was born, and we're as close as ever. It was one thing, I was very emotional as a kid. I used to cry a lot. I used to cry when the Dodgers lost, you know, anything to do with animals, you know, and the guys were saying I was a homo. My mother said I was sensitive, you know. But uh, the one thing was the song Old Shep, where, about the dog who gets, who dies, has to go to doggy heaven. That would always make me cry. And on slow days, my brother would say to his friends, hey, you want to come up and see my kid brother cry? And they would hold me down and get the Victrola out of the closet, put on old Shep. I would cry. Everybody would go, okay. And then they'd go out and have a malted, you know? And so I was going to do that on Family Ties. We did it with his brother, the character of the brother. And he says, the brother's leaving. He goes, you're, still not, you're not still mad at me for the old Shep thing. He goes, no, I never remember, you know? And he leaves, and Michael Gross turns to the record albums there, and the audience laughs because they know it. They know where it's coming. None of the, the writers threatened to quit if I did this. And I said, go ahead, you know? And I said, you know what? It's my show. And I, he goes to there, and they play the entire old Shep record, you know? Um, and of course, because it's family ties, it has to end with Alex getting the big laugh. So Alex comes by. And he goes, what are you listening to, Dad? He goes, oh, old Shep. You know, it's just a song that Robbie and I used to uh, listen to, and I used to cry. And he goes, you used to cry? Come on, Dad, it's just a dog, you know? And then Alex is starting to walk out, and he gets caught up by the song. And then, then he turns back and goes, they shot him? <laughs> and he starts crying. You know, that was the end of it. But that was it. It was real. Audience, what I say, audience knows, audience, here's the advice. Trust the audience. The audience knows what's real. They know what you're doing. They know what's fake. And you have to do what you have to do what's real to you.